My name is Steve Egerreed. I'm a white-tailed eagle project officer working for Forest Stringland based on the Isle of Wight. Today we're looking to see, if we're lucky, white-tailed eagles, a bird that was once extinct across southern England, but through the partnership of Roy Dennis Wildlife Foundation and Forest Stringland has been reintroduced to the shoreline. I'm Tim McCrill from the Roy Dennis Wildlife Foundation. I'm an ornithologist, so basically study birds, but the Roy Dennis Wildlife Foundation has been really actively involved in species reintroductions for many years. White-tailed eagle was once a common bird across the south coast of England and in fact across much of the country. But then, like many birds of prey, historically it was persecuted and the last pair were actually on the Isle of Wight in 1780. The project began in 2019 and we're aiming to release a total of 60 young white-tailed eagles on the Isle of Wight and the idea with that is that we're hoping to establish a population of something like 8 to 10 pairs. The initial stage of the project is translocating young birds from Scotland. A team of really experienced people collect these young birds at about 7 to 10 weeks old and then they come to the Isle of Wight. We hold them in these special aviaries for a short period of time, about six weeks. It's a very quiet location. It's really important that they're undisturbed at that point. One of the critical points of the release is that we minimise human interactions as best we can. We provide food through a hatch and we just drop it off in the nest. All of our interactions are from behind a solid wall. It replicates how the birds of that age would receive food. Adult white-tailed eagle will come and drop food off in the nest and leave them to tear up themselves. We're able to monitor the birds remotely through this incredible CCTV camera system that we have throughout the release area. So it gives us a really good idea of how those birds are developing and we can spot any issues that might occur really early on. The satellite trackers are really useful because they enable us to keep tabs on the birds' movements and build up a very detailed picture of how they're living in the landscape. One of the key things is that they're fitted with these miniature solar panels, which means that while the birds are flying around in the summer, the batteries are continually charged. And these transmitters fit on the bird's back, almost like a, a backpack. We can log the bird's location every minute. And that gives us this minute by minute information on whether the bird's flying, whether it's perched. And so they're not only showing us where they are in the country, but they're also showing us how they're living in the landscape. So they show us that they might be perched for up to 90% of every day. They're showing us how far they're flying out to sea to catch fish. So thanks to these satellite transmitters, we're able to build up this really detailed picture of how they're living. The shallow waters around the coast of the Isle of Wight are rich in all kinds of marine life, fish like grey mullet and bass. There's also a a really interesting organism that we didn't know would appear in white-tailed eagle diet until very recently, which is cuttlefish. Cuttlefish are like mollusks, so they're very similar to snails and slugs. And this is just that shell internalised into the body. And on the coast of the Isle of Wight, you find these all over the place. It's a really abundant food resource for these birds. And it's not one that we're aware of being elsewhere in, in this bird's range. So really amazing. And they're amazing animals in their own right. At the start of the project, there was a lot of concern raised about livestock, concern about pets. But today, we've had no issues of conflict whatsoever with white-tailed eagles. White-tailed eagles are not seen as a problem species anywhere in lowland Europe. We really hope that this initial population will become established. So we hope that eight to ten pairs will become established on the Isle of Wight and then within 50 kilometres of the release site. So at places like Pool Harbour, the Arran Valley in West Sussex. Um, and then slowly but surely, the white-tailed eagle should be able to spread out into other parts of England. We know that they can breed in inland areas near water. They can breed all along the coast. And what makes it special is that this is a bird that should be part of this landscape. This is a bird that we as humans have removed. So it's about undoing past wrongs and restoring a bird that should be a familiar part of the landscape. Already we're seeing that people have got a great sense of enjoyment out of seeing these birds back in the landscape and hopefully that's something that will continue for many years to come. Forestry England is very keen to restore lost landscapes and lost species for the benefit of both people and wildlife and restoring white-tailed eagles to this landscape is restoring that lost apex predator.